when Star Trek premiered in 1966, its creator, Gene Rottenberry, envisioned a future free of poverty, war, and unlimited renewable energy where humans took to the stars to hook up with exotic alien women. Now, unfortunately, none of that has happened, but governments are starting to mandate us off of fossil fuels and embrace an electric future. But we're not ready. Freddy, that's your cue. Spock was into some really weird stuff. Anyway, with soaring gas prices at the pump, we know that the party is probably going to be over soon. And we three are pretty skeptical about electric cars in general, but Auto Tempest and the people that browse Auto Tempest seem to really like them. So they issued us a challenge. We had to find the best gas guzzlers we could for the price of America's favorite EV, the Tesla Model 3. And we had to stack them up against our electric future in a series of challenges. We think the internal combustion engine is still far superior, exactly like Auto Auto Tempest is the best place for you to search for your next car. No matter where in the U.S. it's listed, and no matter what website it's listed on, Auto Tempest combines all the results into one place. They even allow you to get very specific. You can find the biggest engine or the worst fuel economy. Anything you want, Auto Tempest is the place for it. So using Auto Tempest's link below, we found our cars, bought them, and set a course for the bowling homeworld at Maximum Warp. I'm Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. I'm Freddy Tavares Hernandez. I'm Ed Bolian, and this is Car Trek. Oh my. Engage. Well, actually, that's the wrong captain. I should do that again. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a Star Wars fan. What? Is it Star Wars? Use the Force. We bought our fun gas guzzlers. This is a 2003 Viper, the perfect choice. And Freddie, I actually bought his car too a while ago, and it's a terrible choice, a 2006 Z06. This is a terrible choice for a gas guzzler? Absolutely. I used to sell those when they were new. I worked at a Chevy dealership and they get like 30 miles per gallon highway. It does not get 30 miles to the gallon. There's a seven liter V8 under this hood producing 505 horsepower. And yeah, you bought it, but you forgot about it. And yes. I built it better. It was running poorly and uh, I had bought some other hoopties so I needed to sell some fast. But uh, I mean, basically car trek over because this is way more fun gas guzzler. This is known for, what is it, staying on the road? It, yeah, I mean, unless Ed has yeah. something totally out of left field, there's there's no way you can get a more fun gas guzzler for a Tesla Model 3 than a Viper. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. That is uh, not your garden variety Continental GT. That is. Yeah. OK. Hmm. So that is the poverty spec Veyron. Now, brace yourself for some Ed math here. Yeah, this is, this is going to be good. Yeah. This miserably predictable, that hopelessly ineligible, we have to show the audience something with these cars. This is what you buy to guzzle some gasoline. This is a super sports Bentley. It is their supercar version. Very lightweight, yeah. as you may have heard. How lightweight? Coming in at a hair under 5,000 pounds and with an original MSRP of $274,000. So next question how yeah. many times was it on fire yes ed math did you rip off nope. some no. widow no trade salvage title yeah nope clean title clean drug car lord facts. drug lord no drug lord so these are time. like 80 100 grand normally yeah. so that is not a tesla model 3 no. money no it's a very very clean car perfect history perfect history yes it has 177,000 miles. oh Whoa. that's perfect which is a lot, is a lot, but it's a Volkswagen product. They're designed to go to the moon and back, and we're almost there, yeah, I think. Volkswagen, they're designed for reliability. So that's it. I actually went your direction for the first time. This is a salvage title. There we Michael. go! But it was a very light hit on the Carfax, and uh, only 23,000 miles on it. That's why I was able to get this for only $37,000, which is way, way under budget, obviously. Yeah, your panel gaps are great. Yeah, the, I mean, it was a Viper to begin with. It's still a Viper now, a little bit extra paint not done so well but i'm proud of you yeah that's wonderful so it's okay that you guys just have bad cars now right because you have a salvage title car and a car that has more miles than anybody ever thought a bentley could have uh i actually have a car with fifty-five thousand miles clean title all of its original paint and it's actually very fast it's a prius basically it's and it's a prius yes it's a seven liter v8 we're here to show people how to use gasoline as gluttonously as possible and you're gonna uh, look you're gonna get it. 30 miles per gallon on the highway it doesn't get 30 miles it's 26 okay 
So I bought that Corvette for $25,000. I flipped it to you for uh, $25,000. Yeah, it's it's not how, that's not how you do it. Well, that, that's good you're, for you're me. You're learning some things, but you have to make money, even if he's a friend. Why don't you guys come in and tell a few Vin Wiki car stories? He's trying to monetize us staying in his house. Hey, I suppose. Win in Rome. Come on. Ed, can you tell a story about how you made $20,000 off of Tyler? I thought it was 40. 40? <laughs> you're kidding, right? <laughs> So you had to put quite a bit of money in it, I imagine, right? Yeah, about 10 grand. So I got new heads and new cam. This is actually making a lot more power than both of your cars. So wait, so $35,000, Yes. $43,000, all very grand for equal this. to how much you'd pay for a Model 3. How did you get it for $43,000? The guy I got it from after finding it on Auto Tempest did reveal that it had recently been dumped at a CarMax. And so it had been bought through a CarMax auction. Uh-huh. That's so, very confidence inspiring. You know, it's got nice new tires on it. I Uh-huh. I'm sure he just got tired of it and he didn't dump it there for any particular reason, noise, malady of any kind. I'm sure those very expensive carbon ceramic brakes are totally fine. I will say this one looks nice and new. The uh -huh. front right one. Yeah. And at 177,000 miles, you'd expect to have gone through like three or four sets of them. The left one looks like it has been left outside for the last 10, 12 years. So original. Yeah. So I probably have the slowest car, but uh, he built it. It'll probably make it five miles before it's on half its cylinders and running You're like You're gonna hit a tree and... in the first 500 feet. <sighs> Let's go. Well, no, I, actually you probably will. They come out of nowhere, trees. That pulls real hard. So this cam comes alive after 5,000 RPM and it keeps pulling all the way to 7,800 RPM. That is supercar stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! <laughs> Holy hell! My heads up display tells me everything that I need to know about this car without taking my eyes off the road. And the handling, it's good. It's, it's real good. So I'm not a Corvette guy. I was never a Corvette fan, but I was always a fan of this car. And this is an early car. It's a 2006, which means that the later model years had like carbon ceramic brakes and better suspension and all that stuff. But this is the genesis of the Z06 line for the C6 generation. And what they did is fantastic. They took their LS engine architecture, which is essentially a Chevy small block, that pushrod V8 that they've been making for a billion years, and they made it way, way better. <laughs> they increased the displacement to seven liters, so it created 505 horsepower. These engines were also known for some very interesting issues. The valves would drop out of the head and the engine would grenade itself. But I fixed that because I put performance cylinder heads on it, I put a performance cam on it, I put better brakes, a better clutch, and better tires, which means that this isn't making 500 horsepower, this is making closer to 650. Now as far as gas guzzlers are concerned, in stock form, this got 26 miles to the gallon. But with my modifications and with the style of driving that I'm gonna do, I don't think those numbers matter. So with Ed sticking time bomb in his Bentley and Tyler's wayward Viper, all I have to do is wait and I will win every challenge with this monstrous engine. <laughs> That's really good. Braking's really good. We can dive into a corner as well, as long as we don't get on the throttle too hard and go into a big truck. From the beginning, the Viper was the crazy man sports car. It came out in the early 90s, an 8-liter V10, 400 horsepower, but nothing to keep that horsepower from killing you. So celebrities bought these things and crashed them left and right. I believe Kelsey Grammer got a DUI after he flipped his. But then this generation came out. They had the second generation that was a little better. Still not that great. Whoop! Yeah, like that. You gotta be careful. <laughs> you also got a much more refined 
usable car that doesn't have like exposed wiring and computers everywhere. Um, way better, more comfortable interior and not a bunch of bad fiberglass work. This is a way, way better car. It does still have some cheap dodgeness to it. This radio is the same that I had in like a 2000 Dodge Ram. The climate controls as well. But it is a very, very special car for an amazing price. Only $37,000 for this thing. Yes, it's a salvage title, but it certainly doesn't look it. And I get an 8.3 liter V10 with 500 horsepower by this year, 2003. Now the Corvette certainly still in production, doing great. The Bentley Continental GT still very much in production, a popular car for these people. But the Viper is gone. They don't make the Dodge Viper anymore, and that's why you see older examples in this. Basically every generation going up in value. So this is a really good investment for someone as well, I think. So this is a dinosaur, a proper gas guzzler, and the perfect car for this challenge. Maybe it's the obvious choice, but it is a great choice. And Freddy's car, it's not a gas guzzler. They're known to get 30 miles per gallon, so it doesn't fit the challenge. As usual, Freddy buys a car that makes absolutely no sense for what we were setting out to do. He already had the car, so he just used something he already had. It's Bentley, so unreliable. I don't know how it's still going with 170,000 miles on it. I'm sure there are plenty of issues. I'm feeling good about my choice. As long as this Viper doesn't end up biting me, which a lot of them do. I gotta be very careful when I'm on the throttle. Very, very, very careful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry for sounding like Tyler a bit, but I have always wanted a Bentley. I would guess that over the years, I've probably tried to buy a hundred of them, but I've never been able to, and I think it's really a pathology throughout most of the prospective buyers of Bentley cars, because when the Continental GT came out, it really transformed what the brand was. We all love the Arnage and all the vintage cars that came before it, but they weren't really something you could own and depend on. But I've loved the Continental GT and what it stood for and how it represented Volkswagen sort of influencing the brand in exactly the right way. The problem you now face as you enter the pre-owned market for a Bentley is that, you know, if you thought about a challenge like this where you're trying to buy one for 40 to 50 grand, a nicely sorted 04 to 06 that you could probably depend on and has a nice stack of service records is realistically available. However, every time you look at what $2,000 more or $5,000 more or just a little bit more might buy you, it's always worth it. And so now that we have 18 model years, it's really hard to figure out what you want to buy because every time I've started thinking about it, I'm like, well, it'd be nice to have an 08 speed. It gives you a little more power, a nicer trim. But by the time I pay for that, I'm not that far from a nicer Super Sports. But you know, the 2012s were a full on redesign. But then if you're going to buy the 12, the 13 speed is way nicer. So you end up like 90, $100,000 into a Bentley decision when you thought you were just going to spend 40 grand. But back in 2009, when this car came out as a model, year 2010, I was still working at the dealership. So we were a Lamborghini, Aston Martin, McLaren, and Lotus dealer. We weren't a Bentley dealer, but a lot of the Lamborghini dealers that I would talk to at dealer meetings and stuff, they were also Bentley dealers. And they were raving about this car. And I have to say, I could not be any more happy. This thing is awesome. I mean, 621 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque, 204 miles an hour. It is big, it is heavy, but it is a supercar which is weird because we don't think about that when we think about Bentleys. But this thing has saved weight. It's got the seats out of a Bugatti Veyron. It's got carbon fiber everywhere. It's got a carbon fiber harness bar amongst the rear seat delete package. So this is a two plus zero rather than a two plus two like a normal Bentley or most Astons and things like that would be. But man, oh, this thing is just amazing. And honestly, the car is kind of like an obese power lifter. Like, sure, there's probably some stents in the vacuum lines. And yeah, we now use some heavier oil to keep the compression down and the blood pressure low. But hey, at the end of the day, even though the primary care physician probably thinks there's only a couple more years to live, the thing's done 177,000 miles. It can still bench press 600 pounds. And holy cow, can it perform. It is brutal what this car is capable of and it just never stops pulling and it never stops gripping and it never stops braking when you ask it to do that even though maybe one of my rotors is a little bit too old i love it i can assure you i am far more comfortable in this than tyler is in that viper
And while Freddie's back there saying, bang for your buck, bang for your buck, bang for your buck, like every single Corvette owner ever, this is special. This is what fuel consumption and the celebration of internal combustion is all about. Well, I am extremely pleased with my Bentley, I have to say. How are you guys feeling? My previously wrecked Viper is staying unwrecked, so, so far, so good. That's great news. How's your car, Freddy? Nice and cool? My Z06 is uh, pretty good, but I am honestly seeing some fit and finish issues that would be not entirely acceptable in 2022. Like what? Well, the seats uh, are a little bit on the floppy side. I am getting a ton of heat from my center console here. I can't imagine that amount of heat is anticipated on the cars. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna run it like this. It's, it's fine. The tunnel isn't from the exhaust you installed to build it better. Actually, I'm using a stock exhaust, so uh, your guess is as good as mine. I just got a text read in a lovely British voice from a Bluetooth system here, and it said that we are to head to a racetrack for a series of challenges to see how our gas guzzlers measure up. Measure up against what? It didn't say. I imagine it will be something that doesn't make any noise and is horribly boring. That seems like a good guess. We haven't driven far though, and I have used a tremendous amount of gasoline. As everyone who has listened to the roar of a big gas guzzling engine has pined to do, it was time for us to head out on the highway. Of course, Auto Tempest had not accounted for our lovely Metro Atlanta traffic, so we were going to be a little late to our destination. After a few hours, several gas stops, and an inappropriate volume of gummy bears consumed, we finally made it. And boy, had Auto Tempest outdone themselves this time. We were at Georgia's Cathedral of Cars, the pulpit of petrol, Atlanta Motor Speedway. What is this? It's kind of apocalyptic to be the only people in this place. <laughs> it's amazing. Hello! 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 Atlanta Motor Speedway. And they are racing here this weekend. That's right. And they just repaved the whole thing. It went from 24 to 28 degrees, but I'll be honest, coming around, it looks like Everest. The banking is, it's like, it's like this. Well, if they were having a race here this weekend, it'd be canceled because uh, the wetness. It's this a is, little slippy. It's not a problem for me. That'll make it even all wheel drive. I got new tires. Tyler? Mine are seven or eight years old and a Viper with no oh. traction control. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go on the track. That we should, great. we should do that. Let's have some fun. Tyler, dial 9-1 and then wh whatever you gotta Don't do. Don't do that. Okay. Safety first. Viper, please, please, please don't kill me. Oop. Uh, uh, uh oh, we got a problem here with this top down. Oh, this is, this is strong. Thank you, Auto Tempest. Ah. Uh, all right. Um. Can you not fit, Tyler? Come on. Well, they're leaving. <laughs> Headlights on seems appropriate in the venue. All right. Let's see what this is all about. All right. Top down in the rain, that's a whole new experience that I really didn't want to do. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay. There we go. All right, we got a little catch up to do in the warm up lap already. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh man, we go 621 horsepower. Tyler, you are gonna love this. I mean, until you die, obviously. Oh, oh this is so sketchy. NASCAR, they're doing this over 200 miles an hour. Okay. Oh, Corvette, you were made for this. You guys can't feel that, but that was some G-force pushing me in the seat. engine light you're on. I think that's probably not a big deal. 
Oh, thank you, all-wheel drive. Thank you, twin turbo W12. Thank you, electronic aids that will keep me from dying like my Let's try the higher bank this time. All right, this feels a little bit less sketchy. Oh my God, the tire spun at 105. Oh, this is very, very dangerous. It's insane that cars do twice what I'm doing. This is about 110 miles an hour. I am so scared. <laughs> 115, 120, 130, 135. Not too bad for a little sighting left. Oh, there's it. On your inside, guy left. Laughing me on the warm up. <laughs> Guys, it's called a warm up lap. What was that? Oh boy, that was just wonderful. <laughs> How much fun was that? That was amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness. How'd it feel? Terrifying. How were the hands? Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, a yeah. little shaky? A little shaky. Wow. How was it in the rain with the roof off? Sketchy at 90. I did 140 on the back stretch. It was supposed to be a warm up. Are you out of your mind? You gotta warm up the car and the tires before you do that. <laughs> it was warm. <laughs> All right, well now we have to see who's actually the fastest. Okay, I am going to count this down with my honks and we're gonna go on the third honk. I'm gonna go on the first honk. How about this? All by ourselves. No one to save you when you die, Tyler. This is a special, special thing to do. Thank you, Auto Tempest, and much more significantly, thank you for using Auto Tempest so they keep letting us do stuff like this. It's amazing. There are a few things more wonderful than having your insides massaged by the compression and the high speed G forces that only a banked oval can deliver. What made it even better was effortlessly running away from Freddie and Tyler as they feared for their lives. Oh, me. <laughs> that was fun. Woo! Oh, how about that? Oh, my goodness. Hey, look who survived. Welcome to the party. 
You okay? I'm a little worried about the suede inserts in my seats. And oh yeah, they might have been a little. They're fine. They're fine. Do you have a little accident condition? No, they're fine. Oh, this is a thing. Oh, this well, is okay. This is a anticlimactic moment in this evening. That is our arch nemesis right here, the Tesla Model Three. Yeah, so yeah. Auto Tempest wanted us to pit our three gas guzzlers against the Model 3, and here it is. Well, there's no dual motor badge on the back, so it's probably just the single motor short range, yeah? Yeah, this is the, the cheap one. The one like the price of our car. 45,000 bucks? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you could buy a Bentley. <laughs> yeah, a reviver. <laughs> you could buy a Z06 that does this. Oh, hold on, hold on. A text message from Auto Tempest. Oh, okay. We're glad you're enjoying the track this evening, but please remember that the point of this series is to show our viewers some legitimate alternatives to a Tesla Model 3. Yeah, that's and what there we're... are plenty of them watching that would still rather have this brand new car with all of its new features and gadgets than one of your aging sports cars. That's not true. And horrible panel gaps here. Yeah, yeah. look at no, it. That's standard. Glass it says, houses. we want you to use the track now to compare the Tesla to your cars in a fair and unbiased way. But we're going to leave the way that you do that up to you guys. Hey. Okay, guys, we need to have journalistic integrity because if we are unfair. From him. He to, says that. Yes, yes, yes. I know that Tesla's online are, are very revered and loved. So if we're unfair to this car, people are going to be. The mad. Tesla Rati will come and get us, which yeah, yeah, didn't got, happen last you. time. I mean, the car actually did blow up. The Model S with 30 miles of range still showing. It did really die in that car track. Anyway, I have no forward motion here. It says, unable to drive, battery and charge level too low at 35 miles. <laughs> Tyler, you were so wise in buying a high technology car for this adventure. And there were no people with eye patches and pitchforks outside your door. All right, so what, what's, what's the idea? What are we doing? So, Tyler has been terrified by this Viper and driving very slowly. So right. I think we should let 130 him is not slow. drive us around it's, it's slow. in this car as fast as he can. And let's see how far it can go in anger on this racetrack. Okay, so Tyler's gonna go around by himself? No, we need to ride. We have to witness what's happening. See how good the car We're is. We're gonna ride in the car with Tyler while he's going as fast as he can in a car that's actually faster than his. Do you really want Ed to drive with his total lack of self-preservation in his head at all? Be happy to. I like that there's no option of me driving. Well, Absolutely. Well, I mean, obviously not. Obviously. What's wrong with my driving? Let's do it. You will want a helmet though. I mean, there's only seven car tracks of evidence to show that you're not qualified to drive. break this roof with my helmet. <laughs> uh, stop, stop. Okay. Um, so you, you put the key. Okay, okay. it's laminated. Like a, like like a hotel this room? This cubby right here. And the you cup put, you put in the cup holder? No, it's you got, like you it's put, next I, I to the cup holder. Around the, no? no, okay. I'm touching okay. it. Okay, hey. all right, all right, there we go. Hey. Good morning, go. good morning. Spot. Okay, oh, it's on? Oh, okay, we're moving, we're moving. Single oh, motor. Now, to make this extra scientific, we should probably go in the settings. Uh -huh. The regen braking needs to die. Well, we, we're not going to do any braking. I feel like brakes are not Well, it'll, it'll charge when you decelerate, too. So we need to put that on low. Uh -huh. Steering mode, sport, acceleration. Okay, there, there's no there's no chill fast option? on this. Yeah, there's a chill on acceleration, so you don't want to have like fast acceleration, right? Okay. Even though Tyler's traditional automotive fare was of the hoopty persuasion, he did have more EV experience than Freddie or I did. Of course, his track record of bad outcomes had not discriminated based on propulsion type, but I still felt like it was worth letting him jump at the chance to drive anything other than his Viper on that wet track. So it says that we have 228 miles, now 227. Whoa! Okay, that, that range, went, it's gone there down. There we go, let it eat. That graph just had a full erection there for the consumption. <laughs> it went off oh the scale. My goodness. Ah, that is crazy. Get it, Tyler. 
You know, I'm actually doing this faster than in my Viper. We have depleted in two laps, <laughs> 150 miles of range in this vehicle. We're losing a mile every 200 feet. <laughs> So we're gonna make this thing die as fast as we possibly can. Okay. That's our goal. Right. Secondary goal is to not crash it. Yeah, First yeah. is make it die. Let's Second let's is not, not make to ourselves actually die. kill it. Yeah. What does it do to whoever owns this car's phone as we do this to it? <laughs> They're saying something's very wrong with your car. All right, so okay. we've done four laps so far and we have depleted approximately 75 percent of what it is now it's acclimating and we're not eating as many miles per foot as we seem to yeah be. It, i don't know it, what it seems to, it seems to have figured it out i'm just pumping the gas just for fun i don't know so this car is doing a lot better than i thought i mean it's not going faster in the straights but it is no. doing faster in the turns but she's getting low Get it, get it, Okay, go, that was go. 120, that's the fast one. 20, oh, okay, 20, all right. Uh, doing a bank. 19, we are at 19, 19. You got, miles away. Do you want to like run this until zero? Absolutely, we yeah. are pushing it off. No, Let's no. conk it. No, 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 go, no, 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 no. No, remember what happened foot last down, time? Foot down, When it tells us that we have to charge, that we have to pull over to charge, that's Is that like the, the, the empty light coming on? Yes, because if this thing goes to zero, then we can't move it, and it's probably going to be very expensive to get this thing off this track. All right. Just drag it. That Viper's strong. There it goes. We got the beep. We got the beep. It's mad. Oh. Stop just, killing me. Stop. Oh, it hurts. Oh, oh, it hurts. oh, you're so mean with your gas loving. Imagine, if you buy one of these cars, this is your reality. This is what you listen to. Yeah, like, all, oh, I'm all almost to where I needed to be, but no, it's, it's dead. Anger. So this thing just made it 18 miles on its entire chart. My Corvette could do that with one gallon of gas. I think it could do further than that, but I know I could do that in my Bentley. That's sort of my highway MPG maxing out on the Viper, so it's technically possible. So if we go back in there, get all the gas out of our cars, put just a single gallon of gasoline in and drive them reasonably, we can go further than a Tesla owner is capable of going. On a full charge. Yes, yes, okay, I'm stopping. Thank you very much. I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop, okay? Are there any supercharger stations in uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway? I don't know, why would they have that? I'm, they don't have like I, I'm gonna go races. ahead and say no. You know what's really easy? Searching Auto Tempest to find the perfect petrol-powered propulsion. You know what isn't easy? Siphoning fuel from a modern car's tank. So we let Tyler do it. We put just a single gallon of preposterously overpriced fuel into each car, and we set out on a mission to civilize. boys the name of the game is restraint easy on the throttle pedal the opposite, opposite of what you think Ed. so that's it you can manually shift that thing don't go over like 2000 rpm okay okay copy that and you know what else would help drafting yeah put your whale in front and give us some air that'd be great absolutely so we're gonna have a nice slow start freddie why don't you count us down this is going to be the most boring race start of all time. Why did I rev there? Okay. I got the jump, which I'm not supposed to. Okay, Ed? All right, I'm coming out in front. Freddie fall behind, Tyler in the back. All right, guys, for maximum efficiency, we need to be as close as possible. You know, they instituted the 55 mile an hour speed limit because it was supposed to be peak efficiency. So let's try to settle in somewhere around there. Without the G-forces, 
doing anything to my car. I feel like I'm gonna fall out of my driver's door. Let me get up in the draft now. All right, guys, I'm getting absolutely covered in crap and I have the top down. I need to go in front, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, I suppose that does make sense. We'll come right on around. Easily, obviously. Come on, Tyler, you can do it. Wait, you're going 70 now. Come on, stop it. Slow down, I'm out of the draft. like 1,100 RPM. How about you guys? I'm about 1,500. I'm about 1,100, and uh, my instant fuel economy says I am doing 34 miles to the gallon. So you're proving my point. That's not a gas guzzler. I mean, that's better than a Prius, literally. Guys, I do believe I just had my first little cough. Tyler, we've done like three laps. Coast, coast. <laughs> it's still going. I mean, it's just a little momentary cough. All right, we just started our 10th lap, Tyler. Are you gonna make it? <laughs> it's still going, but it's not happy. I don't think that car's ever been happy here. Come on, Viper. Come on, Viper, hold on. There we go, there we go. Just sip, just a little bitty sip. He's just trying to coast. Corvette's doing fine. Hey guys, this is it, here it goes. <laughs> uh oh, 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 how shocking. Oh, oh no, ow. We're out, I'm out. So Tyler, you did about 16 miles, a couple shy of the old Tesla. I gotta make it around one and a half more times for the tie. All right, it's time for me to save us. You know those cars are uh, not good when you run them low on gas. You have knock, you have improper burns on the cylinder walls. It's, uh, it's, it's not gonna be good for you. No, it's just once, it'll be fine. I've run plenty of cars out of gas. I am so bored watching this, enormously bored. We just finished the 12th lap. We have beaten the Model 3, yes! Superiority! While that is a good thing to celebrate, uh, Corvette's still doing totally fine. No coughs, no hiccups. Can we just die already? Oh, oh, I got a hiccup as well. Oh man, uh, come on, come on. That light is as buried as it can be. Empty. You can make it, Ed, come on. One more lap. Oh, hold on, I got a little bit. I got a little power. Get to the top, get to the top, get to the top. <laughs> I've lost power, I've lost power. Freddy, you're our only hope. Keep going. So how many laps did you do? I did 14. 21 miles, that is. Still coasting, still coasting. Let's get a convenient parking spot here. Well, I'm gonna do my victory lap. You guys can push your cars back into the pits, all right? <laughs> okay, this Viper does not roll very well, <clears throat> unfortunately. I think that's it. I think that's all I got. Oh yeah? Sputter, sputter. That's it, I got, I got nothing. At least get past Tyler here, we need that shot. Do you have a little more and a toe strap? That would be real nice right now. So, uh, so, so my car is in EV mode. Yeah. So, yeah. How you over feeling? 30 miles per gallon. You so, bought a Prius. It's well, I bought a Prius, customer. but you're you're the one pushing your car. Hey, how many laps was that? You just proved my point. I think I did 18 laps. 27 miles. 
That is so unacceptable based on the premise of this challenge. The whole point is to use as much gasoline that we can while we can, and there's no reason to sip it. Oh. Tyler is uh, about to no. need to go to the hospital. And there you go. Uh, so what have we learned? If you were to be so foolish as to go out and spend 45,000 of your dollars on a Tesla Model 3, the entirety of its range wouldn't take you as far as a single gallon of gas in my Bentley or Freddy's Corvette mm -hmm. and just a little more than a gallon of gas in Tyler's Viper. I'd say that's worth it. Science. And we're solving the world's problems. So usually around now we get in our cars and drive away. We can't do that now. No, right. they're dead. I need some more gas to guzzle. Yeah. I know, but you sucked it all out of this can over here. Yeah, so we'll just put it right back in. Tyler, you are oddly really good at that. <laughs> My last name is Hoover. Mr. Bowling, you're not to exceed one quarter impulse as we approach space dock at Jupiter Station. Uh, uh, darn space trees. So I can't find a new Millennium Falcon on Auto Tempest, but no, I this probably is Star Trek, not, not Star Wars. So it'd be like a starship. But we will find any car that you guys want to buy because it combines every major car listing site on the internet into one very easy search. And that's no Jedi mind trick. This is actually where we go Star every again. day it's to search for our belt. next car. And it's the most powerful tool to help you find your next car. It'll take your used car searching to infinity and beyond. It's like a Toy Story Buzz Lightyear. So use Auto Tempest, link below. We use it every single day to search for used cars, and it makes Cars Trek possible. It's put me on the bridge of an enterprise. My dream come true. Look at this. T Tyler, is this a thing? That's, yeah, one, live long and prosper. Yes. No, that's, that's, that's the shocker. Oh, God.